guys, Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video. I'm glad to have you here today. Hey, uh, before we jump into five epic champions that I had no idea were actually good, they're pretty obscure too. They're, I, I don't think I've talked about any of these champions much on the channel, maybe in passing, but that's about it. Before we jump into that, random question for you guys. How much of your media consumption is on YouTube versus like streaming apps or TV or whatever else is out there, TikTok, whatever. How much is on YouTube? For me, it's been very interesting. These last maybe two, three, four years somewhere, I'm the, I find myself, besides sporting events, I don't even watch regular TV. And then I'm actually watching less of like, you know, Hulu and Netflix and, and HBO Max or whatever the heck it's called now. And I'm, I'm consuming a ton on YouTube. I actually find that no matter what you're into, there's usually better on-demand content on YouTube than streaming apps. At least that's my opinion so far. It's been uh, it's been a cool kind of uh, transition for me, right? Anyway, guys, we're talking about champions, not media consumption today. Uh, let's just jump right into it here, right? So five, there's actually a billion epics that I love, so I can make so many more of these videos, and I would encourage you guys to go ahead and let me know if there's an epic out there that you absolutely love that no one ever talks about. Let me know in the comments, because I would love to build them. This actually stems from my very, or my, my other channel, my very, my very what? My other channel, Raid Shadow Legends Champion Guides, where I'm at like 300 champion guides now. So I'm building champions just to do a guide on them. And some of them don't impress me much. That don't impress me much. Some of them, they freaking do. Like, I, it's like going to see that crappy movie and you're like, wow, this is not crappy at all. It's actually really good. These are actually from those sort of examples. Either I've, I've recently covered them on a guide or I'm about to cover them on a guide and I really love them. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, just quick disclaimer, like the guys like Tagore, right? Some of my personal faves, that your regular viewers, you'll know. Skoramis. I'm going to leave these dudes off because even, even though... I feel like not enough people talk about these champions. I talk a freaking enough for everybody about them, right? Monthly payment it is. So I'm gonna leave those off the list. Okay, let's jump into it. I wanna start with an OG banner lord. None other than Oathbound. Ooh, Oathbound. That's right, man. This dude, I'm sure some of you guys have heard of him. Heck, some of you guys might use him. There's actually a Cursed City room right now where every team, it's in, in Soul Cross, it's there's not it's it's a very difficult dungeon, right? Every team uses him. And if you don't have him built, obviously you're not clearing that stage at least yet at the time of this recording. So what's so good about Oathbound? Well, A, he can smack. B, he's a defense-based champion. So 1300, easy to keep alive. And then C, a hell of a lot of control on this dude. On his A1, he's got a freeze, okay? You know it's an old school champ when they scale off attack and defense, and when it has to tell you damage inflicted is proportional to defense. That's old school. Now they don't do it. They don't do this crap <laughs> very often, right? Uh, the most you'll get is like a Razzlevark, like attack and speed or something like that. Uh, but the damage inflicted, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a little nostalgic for yours truly, guys. Subjugate, his A2 is a three turn cooldown. An AoE, decrease attack, big version, three turn, Fantastic. And then we have a 50, 75% chance of decreasing each target's turn meter by 20%. 80% uh, chance with Sniper. Great control. And then we have a quadruple hit on the A3 Intimidate. It's a four turn cooldown when booked four times at random. Each hit 30, make it a 50% chance of placing a block active skills for two turns. The chance of the block active skills goes all the way up to 100% if they're under the decrease attack, which he has on his A2. Now, block active skills, this is a, obviously is a really good ability. It can be cleansed, so it's not as good as a put skills on cooldown, but it's still a really good control kit, you know, all said and done. It just, it, it's just really solid. He's got the freeze, got the defense, he's got the damage. Have you forgotten us? Speaking of damage, we have a 1.5 attack plus 2.7 defense. It actually ends up being a pretty tough, a pretty hard hit, right? Uh, and why do they even put the damage inflicted is proportional to defense when that's not even true? I guess it technically is true, but it's defense and attack. Man, fix that. Bam. My work here is finished. All right, subjugate. A four multiplier on the, a on the AoE. 
That's really good. That's like, that's in the same neighborhood as like a, a Grush the Mangler, a Hoskarul when you're talking about how hard they hit, right? And then a 1.65, but again, it's a quadruple hitter on Timidate. Is this dude an S tier epic? No. But is he impressive? Is he useful? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Okay. Next on the list is going to be, we're going to move over a little bit. Take a gander over to the Sacred Order, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go to another old school. A lot of these are actually old school. Not all, but a lot are. Call him the king of nostalgia. And it's going to be Canoness, another defense-based epic. And her defense is really solid, 1321, for an epic champion. That's a, that's a really solid number. Canoness got a massive buff, a massive buff about a year and a half ago, uh, maybe two years now. And not a lot of people really talked about it, but it was it made her it went from her being like really crappy, hard hitting, defensive, crappy champion. Well, I say hard hitting because she's always had like a weirdly hard hitting a one. OK, uh, on lead the charge. That all being said, she got a pretty damn good buff, right? Uh, attacks one enemy, a decrease, an increased attack on a random ally for two turns. OK, kind of a weird a one, but whatever. Uh, blinding assault attacks one enemy, 100% chance of placing a decreased accuracy in a leech for two turns. The attack is always critical. Okay, cool. Uh, cool thing about this ability is it's great against bosses. Decreased accuracy and leech are great, especially progression against bosses. But really, it was the A3. Uh, I actually want to show you what she used to look like. Shout out to Ayumi Love website here. Uh, I love a Yumi Love because you can go back and they have all the patch notes starting with the very first day Raid Shadow Legends was released, right? So you can kind of, if you're anything like me, you like, again, the nostalgia of Raid, you can go check it out, right? And by the way, sorry, my voice is like gone because I'm, I'm a little getting over a sickness. Out of the way! I'm here to help you. I need to borrow this. Why are you so happy? Canon S, way back in, uh, way back in, when, when was, wait, wait, wait. Okay, it was the same day that Muddy Uko in Staltis and Ecclesia was introduced. This is a good day, huh? Skrank is a boss. Dirindil smacks. One of, one of the best epic nukers out there. And then, I mean, these three are all amazing uh, legendaries. But again, we're looking at like, you know, a year and a half ago, okay? Canon S, they first of all increased her base speed. She used to be an 89 base speed uh, champion. Now she's 98. I wish they would do that more often, right? They did the same thing with Solus. But there's, you know, the, the, the number one need of that in the game, in my opinion, is Raz and Scarhide. 91 base speed on a permanent fusion legendary. Get out of here. You stay here. He's a really good champ, but that bog down and the speed, it, it, it kind of, it, it, I would love to see a buff. Hey, you. Okay, anyway, I digress. It was the A3. They changed this whole skill around. They totally changed it. And now it's really good. Uh, so let's go back to it. What does it do? Stalwart Guardian. The number one thing you need to know about the skills is on a two turn cooldown, okay? When booked. An ally protect big version and an increased defense. Big version on this target, uh, on the target and this champion for two turns. Also places the big version of continuous heal on all allies for two turns. The continuous heal on all allies for two turns on a two turn cooldown is really good. It makes her an exceptional healer. And then she can get back to this ability pretty dang, pretty dang often, right? Uh, because it's a two turn cooldown. So she can ally protect. She can, you know, protect herself or increase, protect herself vis a vis the increased defense. I just think she's got a really cool kit. Uh, speed and fashion increased by 20%. Again, she's a bit more of a progression or a secret room or a cursed city champion. Uh, but you could definitely use her again progression wise and in really, you know, ice golem, any dungeon that you need someone who's tanky protector healer, right? So I love Canon S and she hits hard too. Let me pull up her multiplier real quick. She has a 3.5 multiplier on her A1. And then on her A2, she has a 5.7 defensive multiplier and it's always critical. So that's pretty, it's a pretty nice addition there that she can smack on top of everything else we talked about, okay? Uh, number three, guys, we're going to go over to Ogren Tribe. I actually have two of my five choices are from Ogren Tribe today. Number one is going to be a guy by the name of Galkut. Galkut. So this another speed that 91 is too slow. It's too slow for an epic, in my opinion. But he's still 
can can he can he can circumvent his speed and be very effective on your team. Now Gal Cut's really cool. He's unique. He's got a decreased defense on his A1. I want to skip right to his A3 ability. An AoE attack with a bomb that detonates after two turns on a four-turn cooldown. So hey, it's a bomb champion. Bombs obviously are effective in everywhere in the game, right? Uh is A2 though. It's an it's an kind of an AoE. It's on a three-turn cooldown, attacks all all enemies one by one in random order. Damage inflicted decreases by 25% after each hit. So at first glance, you're like, wait a sec, man. It, it inflicts by 25% after each hit. That kind of sucks. Why not just give him a nice AoE, right? Well, number one is you can circumvent like blast proof masteries, uh, AoE damage uh, mitigation uh, passives like a Duchess, for example, right? Uh, you can mitigate that stuff, which is great. Uh, and the damage starts up so freaking high on this dude. <laughs> and he's kind of like, he's like, he's, it's one of these weird combos of not a lot of HP, but a lot of defense. It's kind of weird when they do that. That. But he can actually take a punch. He can take a hit. And obviously, you want to scale him with as much attack as possible because, you know, you want to get some nice bomb damage too. But between the AoE kind of, sort of, not really AoE and the AoE bomb, he can put out some serious damage, man. He's kind of fun to mess around with. The reason I mention him is because I just rebuilt him. I took him out of the vault to use in a random, again, Soul Cross, Hard, Curse City area. And he was my damage lead by far in that content. And I was like, okay, I got to talk about my man Galkut. Really quickly here, take a look at his multipliers. He's got a 1.85 on his A1, okay, two-time hitter. He's got a 6.7 multiplier on his A2. Uh, so we're starting by hitting really freaking hard, you know? The only downside is, is it's a random order. I really wish you could choose the first target because then you could just pop him off and kill him automatically, right? He's got a nice four multiplier on his AoE on the A3. And he's got the bomb on top of it all. So yeah, man, I've always thought that Galkut was a pretty cool champ. But now just seeing his damage, I'm just like, wow, dude. He's, he's, he's pretty legit. He's pretty fun, right? Now I will say that if I had to choose an epic bomber out of the Ogren tribe, and he's not the other one we're going to talk about, it'd be good old Grunch Killjoy. But we've talked a lot about Grunch Killjoy on the channel. He's got a cleanse and a continuous heal for every debuff removed from them. And a bomb. He's got the bomb. Grant is not 100%. It's a four-turn cooldown. But I do think that Grunch, it would be my choice out of Galka and Grunch because he just brings a bit more to the table, support and damage. But again, I've talked a lot about Grunch. I haven't talked a lot about Galka. So I was your second choice? The other one is actually Lorne the Cutter, okay? Lorne the Cutter, number four champion on our list today, dude. This guy, some of you guys probably know what I'm talking about. Anybody invest in Lorne? He's, first of all, a Fire Knight god, Fire Knight normal, uh, specifically. He's got a triple hitter, heals himself on the A1. Then he's got an AoE leech and heal reduction, 100% heal reduction, right? So we love the heal reduction as well. Leech is good, again, in almost all content, right? And then Snatch into Darkness attacks one enemy, 100% chance when booked, of decreasing the target's turn meter by 100%. So he's got 100% turn meter manipulation. You can use him all over the place because 100% turn meter decrease, really valuable, obviously. Dark Fey, Ice Golem, obviously Fire Knight with the A1. I feel like he's a really fun champion. And that's right, he does some nice damage too, right? Let me pull up his multipliers for you guys. Uh, Lorne, a 1.2 on the A1. Again, that's a triple hitter. He's got an AoE 3.8. Not bad, not amazing. I, I I don't want it when I say he does nice damage. He's like a debuffer damage dealer, secondary. He's not all out nuke, but he's pretty good. He can hit hard. Snack is, snatch into darkness is a 5.6. Man, I like Lorne. I really like Lorne. He has a lot of utility. He can help a lot of players out. The last on our list, I feel like we talked quite a bit about damage dealers, some control as well. Let's talk about a Reviver. I think, personally, probably the most slept-on epic single-target Reviver in the game. And he's another old-school, guys. We're kicking it old-school today. Fang Cleric. Who are you again? First of all, I don't know, I don't, I don't know why people don't use him. Don't talk about this guy, right? If you need a Reviver, 
It's not even a reviver. He's just like, he's a really, let's just, let's just look at his kid, Ash. Speed in all battles by 15%. So yeah, 15% isn't the best all battle speed aura, but it is an all battle speed aura, meaning you can use him in Cursed City. Keep in mind, there is no aura that works in Cursed City other than all battles, right? So, you know, it's really good to have, right? Attacks one enemy, has a 100% chance of transferring a random debuff from this champion to the target. I don't like the books there on the A1 to be fair, but it's a decent A1. On the A2 ability, Shadowy Blessing. You guys are start, probably starting to pick up what I'm putting down a little bit here, guys, but I love two-turn cooldowns. And he's got a two-turn cooldown. Stop it! Heals an ally by 20% of this champion's max HP. We love heals based on the, the, the caster's max HP. Also fills the target's turn meter by 30% if they're fully healed by this skill, which is a really cool ability, especially on a two-turn cooldown, because you can, if you don't, sometimes, a lot of times, and you guys know this, you build the healer, and a lot of times you just don't need the heal. Actually, more than 50% of the times, your team's like doing pretty well, you know? You don't need the heal. So you can instead just fill somebody's turn meter by 30%, okay? Places a Veil buff on the target for one turn if they're not fully healed by the skill. So again, it gives you the flexibility either way. Someone's really low on HP on your team, not only do you heal them by his max HP, which can be a very significant heal, 20% of his max HP could be 60% of their max HP, right? Fill their uh, turn meter, right, if they're not, but the Veil, the Veil is really nice too. It's going to mitigate 7.5% of AoE damage under the Veil, right? And it's also going to make them invisible, right? Untargetable by single uh, target attacks. Uh, and again, you know, there's plenty of champions out there who can fill turn meter, even on an AoE, like, you know, uh, Seeker or even Doom Screech. So it's not that special, but having the heal and the turn meter or the Veil on a two turn, I think it's a really nice ability that can be used an at any time in the battle, right? Uh, return to the ranks, a four turn cooldown single target revival. Revise a dead ally, 30% HP, 30% turn meter, not that great. But it is a four turn cooldown and he's placing an unkillable on them for one turn and a, a big version of continuous heal for two turns. So between that unkillable and the continuous heal, it really helps them heal up. Uh, just hope there's not a buff stripper on the other team, right? Uh, so again, the speed aura, and speaking of speed, his base speed is very nice for a reviver at 105, you know? He's no blind seer, but 105 is pretty dang good. And then again, his HP, his defense, it's, it's all pretty solid. So guys, there it is. Those are five epic champ, uh, obscure if you will, epic champions that I really love, that I built, and I was like, wow. These, these champions can absolutely help a lot of players. And the cool thing is we talk a lot about new champions here on the channel. These are old school champions. They're OGs. And I still think they've got it, which is nice because I spend a lot of time complaining about all the OGs that need a buff. It's nice to know there's still some out there that are actually pretty dang useful in a lot of situations for a lot of players out there. Now, you guys let me know in the comments below who's your favorite obscure epic could even be a rare even a legendary let me know and maybe i'll mention them in your comment in a future video much love and as always take care guys